Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Working on the 48 volt rig today. Putting some new components in this system to get better performance, reliability, longevity, things like that. You can see these little cycling back minis right here are missing a component. Are you wondering what that component is? Well, please stick around, find out. I'll show you everything about it. So I'm sure some of you know what I'm going to talk about on these batteries. Those of you that have some experience with batteries, you know the component I'm going to fix and add to these batteries. To those of you that don't, let me show you the component and then show you why I'm going to put this component on. So the component I'm going to add is a battery balancer. This is a lead time balancer. I bought two of these balancers off of Amazon. One's going on this set and I've already got a set pre-installed down here that's been on for a few days. And I want to show you some data off of that. But what does this balancer do? So those of you that are new uh, to lithium batteries and things, you know, each one of these batteries is comprised of four cells. You're going to have 16 cells here total for a 51.2 system like this one is part of. You know, each, each set of these cells may have a little bit different resistance. So if you're cycling these batteries up and down, daily operation, uh, partial states of charge, all kind of different variables come into play. Over time, these batteries are more likely than not to creep out of voltage or out of sync with each other, different states of charge. So when you're you're running them, one battery may have lower resistance, it'll fill up quicker, and this one may be a little slower, or so on and so forth. So you'll end up with, over the course of six months to a year, just depends, uh, could be sooner, could be longer, you'll have one battery when you're charging, it'll be at 100%, one will be at 98, 94, 95, whatever. I mean, they can creep out 0.2 of a volt, 0.3 of a volt sometimes. This balancer bleeds the high battery down to the lower batteries, and keeps them all equal, keeps them at the same state of charge and the same voltage. So any little minuscule resistance differences or wiring differences or things like that, this balancer takes care of it. Now, of course, some of you don't like balancers. Uh, a lot of folks call it maintenance on your lithium. They disconnect the series string and then parallel them together once or twice a year and charge them up to full charge it, you know, on 12 volt setup, you know, with a 14.6 volt charger, bring them all up that way. Uh, I found this balancer works pretty good. It's automatic. It maintains everything for you. One of those things you just install it and kind of forget it and just maybe hit it with your meter once or twice a year to make sure the balancer is good. And you know, that's, that's pretty much it. And yes, I've been using lead time balancers for quite a while. Here is a lead time balancer on, uh, yeah, on those batteries right there. And when was that put in? Um, 12, one and these batteries are dead on the money. So I'm going to put this balancer on the cycling bats in just a minute. Since these are easier to get to, easy to see. Let me show you one I put in a few days ago. I've not charged this system. It is a low state of charge. I've robbed this system down uh, to power a bunch of things the last few days because we have had nothing but rain and cold weather. So this one's at a little low state of charge. So perfect time to put these balancers on. So when it comes back up, everything can balance out like it needs to be. Here's another set of 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries, series wired together to get 51.2 volts. I've had this balancer on this set of batteries for three days. I wrote the starting voltages down on masking tape. These are 150 amp hour batteries. I intentionally had these batteries all out of whack on purpose to see if that balancer could bring them all back together. So the top battery, we're doing A, B, C, D. So battery A was at 13.06 to start. Battery B, 13.20. Battery C, 13.20. And battery D, 13.09. So the two center batteries, higher state of charge than the two upper and lowers. I said they were not balanced beforehand. So now let's see after three days what this balancer has been able to accomplish. All right, so three days on 150 amp hour batteries with a pretty good differential in state of charge. So we're gonna check them from top to bottom. Battery A is at 13.14 now. B is at 13.15. C is at 13.14. And battery D is at 13.13 volts. So it is drained energy from this battery and this battery and put it into this battery and that battery. So three days of working, that's not bad. 
and the batteries have not been charged or discharged in several days either. So, you know, there's not been any charge to fluff them up or anything like that. It's just straight balancer working on these batteries. So when you buy the little balancer uh, from Lee Time, I bought from Amazon. So I'm assuming it's the same from their website or Amazon or whatever. You get your little book right here that tells you all the specs. What I was talking about earlier, they claim up to a 10 amp current draw. I've never checked current draw between the batteries and a standby current of 5 milliamps. Uh, haven't seen any effects on any capacity on any batteries or anything like that because it's supposed to just take energy from the high battery to the low battery vice versa balance everything out where it's all the same so there's some you know quick specs on it one thing i will make note of the cable length they're showing 59 inches and i'm pretty sure that's total length that is definitely not per lead so uh the, comes in a little bag right here in the box saw the box a minute ago when i got that out of the way but here's the balancer right here uh there's you talk about the leads right there they are not that is not 59 inches per lead that would be total wire attached so you can see for scale there's some 12 volt mini batteries right there and those leads are definitely not 59 inches a piece i think that's a typo on their end so the bouncer's got four little mounting holes right there where you can put some screws in it mount it to you know a wall or whatever you're mounting it to and it's got little anti-short uh covers that goes on the end of each wire so when you're putting these in you cannot let these touch between each each strand so you've got four on there so for 48 of course four 12s you can't let this set of wires touch this set of wires vice versa because it will short it out so that's what those little little plastic things for right there is to you know they give it to you so you can kind of keep it all isolated while you're working on it I usually take a little bit of electrical tape myself and just uh just wrap them with a couple of wraps of electrical tape and you can also use one balancer for two 48 volt battery banks. I don't personally like that. I'd rather use one balancer per string of batteries. That way you have more available balance current you know, between the batteries. And if you did it like this, you have so many more levels of possible resistance between each battery. I just feel personally that it works better set up like this, one balancer per string of batteries that way if you ever lose a balancer or it acts up you're only one set of batteries that may not be balanced instead of two sets so find your suitable mounting point if you're going to install this on your batteries uh, this one i've already got concrete board right here they don't get hot per se on the back of them you may feel a little bit of warmth and things like that, but I always try to mount anything that produces heat on a non-flammable substrate, such as concrete board, cement board, things like that. So concrete board right here. I'm going to probably put the balancer, probably gonna mount it right there to keep it low in case I need to add a shelf or something in right here. That'll give me enough room to reach in and remove it if it ever fails. If I put a shelf here and also I can reach in here uh, down the road if need be and make connections or whatever. But I labeled the batteries starting at the positive on the string. This is A, B, C, and D going through the string. And Lee Time recommends that you hook them up as set up similar to this. A, B, C, and D. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me get it mounted on the wall right here. And then I will show you hooking it up. And before I install the bouncer on the Cyclone Bat Minis here, just go through and check everything these should be pretty close 1314 on that one uh 1314 there and then we got 1314 right there and then uh 1314 right there and these were parallel together for a few days before hooking them up series uh the a oakley's i showed you a minute ago now i, I intentionally made them get out of whack so I got the balancer mounted on the wall right here above the Cyclone Bat uh, mini battery bank here. And before you hook your balancer up to your batteries, make sure it's not under load. So if you've got a breaker or whatever, or your fuse, pull so there's no load. So I'll just reach down here and kill the breaker to this battery bank right here. So now there's no load, no power coming in or out of this battery bank. All right, so I've got the batteries A, B, C, and D in this string and then the balancer a b c d as far as the leads coming out so i'm going to start with sets leads a and those are m8 ring terminals on there so if you got m8 bolts you know that's going to fit just fine so i'll take uh, the rest of these right here and what i'll usually do is i'll just take a little bit of electrical tape right there 
whatever floats your boat now, this is what i do do it however you want and i'll just put a little bit right there around that sleeve so that sleeve will not come off or get bumped because they're they're not that tight on there uh you can kind of finagle them around and get them to be a little more snug on the terminal but just in with a little bit of electrical tape so they don't come loose and touch something you don't want to touch while you're working your way through the series string so i'll take all these other leads where i'm not working on them for the moment tuck them off to the side right there so i can get to the terminals on battery a so i'll start right here on battery a so i'll just move these off to the side and pop them off like that and then i'll take my positive lead right here which you can kind of route them however you want for uh, beauty purposes i'm going to carefully route right through here so i'm going to bring them down the center and have them all out best looking i can get so bring your leads however you want them and then put it always put it on top of the terminal because you want the power lead to make the best contact with the battery terminal and then i just align them you know best way i can right there however i want it to look and then i'll hit them right there and i'll come back and torque that with a torque wrench shortly once i'm finished with the whole set and then same thing for the negative for battery a i'm going to carefully route it through here so that does not touch anything routing it through there i'll tidy it all up before the end of the video so there's my lead let me pop this terminal off right here and same thing just take your lead off right there put the uh, balancer lead on top of the power lead orient it however you want i'm just going to uh i don't know if i'm gonna put it here i might put it right there i'll come back and adjust them in just a minute and uh i didn't have the i had it on drill a minute ago on this little driver you just set them on like 14 let it click a couple of times and i come back with the torque wrench afterwards so I'll go ahead and tighten tighten this one down right there and then i'll just continue down the string be back with you in just a minute all right there's all the leads from the balancer to the cycling bats uh everything's tightened down now i got to organize the wiring I haven't played a quick little game of zip tie bandit, uh, some cable management. I may rearrange that later, but everything's down secure. It's not going to get snagged on anything, uh, you know, secured to the main wire. So nothing will be damaged. So now I'll turn the breaker, reach back over here and turn the breaker on. So now there is power back on the pack to the rest of the system, which nothing's changed because everything's turned off. So, you know, that's basically it. So I'm not going to bother putting a amp reading on these a current reading between you know each of these wires these are all pretty closely balanced it will be minuscule and not be easily seen so let's go back down to the oakley batteries and we'll check them so this is the only lead i can really get to because i've got all the other leads routed in here and and tied down to the main wires i still got to get some uh sticky back zip tie mounts right here to secure these down to this upper battery i said when you got a larger battery that is a drawback with the leads that's on this yeah you, know, you can't quite you know, i'd love to have routed them up here and kept them tucked in but i will put one of those sticky back holders right there and that'll be just fun i don't really like adding length to one set of wires because they're all the same length balancing wise you know that that could affect it i'm not sure but my thoughts is keep the wire leads all the same so this is what i did but let's get a uh let's get a current reading on this lead right here and see if it's doing anything so yes it is it is very minuscule as you can see point uh 0 0.05 0 0.07 so pulsing back and forth a little bit of current into that top battery so hey there you go so there's a balanced cycling bat 51.2 volt pack with a lead time balancer on it and the cost, like I said, I paid $47 for each of these balancers that's in this system off of Amazon. So I'll have a link in the description if you want to check these out. They work pretty good. And for those haters, the 4 by 12 haters, let me explain myself right here. You know, why don't you just use a server rack? Yeah, got a server rack right there. Why don't you use a server rack? Well, let me, let me give you the price total for this pack right here. Okay, each battery was $133. And then the balancer was $47. That's $579 for a 5.12 kilowatt hour pack right here. Okay, yeah, we got some wire and we got a breaker over here. Uh, $20 breaker. And then how much wire is this value wise? I don't know. 25 or 30 bucks worth of wire just to build the pack, not including, you know, the connector, but, you know, fitting, shrink, 
you know, shrink tape and all that. Yeah, you know, we might be at six hundred ish, six hundred and twenty bucks for a five point one two pack. And then the server rack, of course, is around nine hundred dollars. More features on the server rack, but I like building packs like these. I like a mix of server racks and these. Why? Well, if one of these batteries was to decide to let go or have a BMS failure or something, guess what? I've still got one, two, three batteries, 3.84 kilowatts to use on my 12 volt system. So if I had something fail here, I can take the bad battery out, use the other three in a 12 volt system. Now server rack, if it goes down, you're down, it's over with. So I am a proponent for four by 12. You know, you have to add a balancer, a little accessories, a little extra wire, but it does have a benefit of being able to use it on another system if something ever drops out. That is why I like having some of these mixed in. Hope you all enjoyed the video today. Any questions or anything, put in the comment section. Please hit that like button. I really appreciate that and it really helps the channel. Hope you have a nice day. Take care and be safe. I'll see you on the next one.